In celebration of women's writers as part of Women's History Month, Bergen Stages Radio Theater is thrilled to bring you Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Today's play is a powerful gripping tale written by a girl whose life was as bleak as the somber Yorkshire moors where the story is laid. It's already stirred millions as it will tug at your heartstrings today. Desolate and lonely are the rolling moorlands of England, where, in the winter night, the snowdrift stands like giant spectres in the teeth of screaming gales. About 150 years ago, a stranger lost his way on such a night. Freezing, blinded, and stumbling, he saw at last the fitful lights of an old manor house, aged and crumbling on the hillside. He knocked desperately at the door. It was opened by a doddering old butler who stood staring at him. Then, without a word, he led the stranger into the musty living room, where in the dim candlelight, a man and two women sat without moving. The man was tall and weathered looking. On his face, the stamp of years of bitter suffering. At his feet, a great dog growled ominously. At last, the man turned and spoke. Who are you? And what do you want? My name is Lockwood. I've lost me way on the moors. Down, Wolf. Down. Strangers have no business on the moors at this time of the year. Or no business here at any time. But I couldn't find the village. A man could die out there on a night like this. I'm afraid I shall have to presume on your hospitality until morning. Do as you please. I beg your pardon? I don't keep accommodations for visitors. You'll have to sleep with one of the servants. Heathcliff, you can't. He's our guest. Hmm? Then suppose you attend to his comfort. Ellen, show the gentleman to the guest room, please. The guest room, mistress? Yes, there's no other place. Yes, mistress. This way, sir. If you'll hold the lamp, sir, while I unlock the door. Of course. Mind you, don't stumble on the carpet. It's about falling to pieces, I'm afraid. You call this the guest room? It was once. It's a trifle depressing. May I light a fire? No fire will burn the grate, sir. The chimney's been clogged for years. Hmm. Must have been a fine old house once. What's it called? This is Wuthering Heights, sir. And the tall chap downstairs with the piercing eyes? That'll be Master Heathcliff, sir. And the once lovely lady who looks at him with fear? That's his wife, Mistress Isabella. Well, uh, good night, sir. If you want anything, there's the bell rope. My name is Ellen. Thank you, Ellen. Good night. Good Lord! The window. The catch broke in the wind. Stand back, I'll close it. Let me in. Let me in. I'm lost on the moor. Listen, I had a voice. Let me in. I'm lost on the moor. Heathcliff. Heathcliff. Good heavens, a hand. A gold hand grabbing my wrist. A hand? Didn't you hear the voice? A woman shouting she's lost on the moor. What's going on in here? A voice out there, a woman crying that she's lost. Then she's come. She's come again at last. Uh, Kathy, wait for me. Wait for me. He's not going out there in that storm. I'm coming, I I'm coming, Kathy. This is insane. Come back. Close the window, sir. But that man out there. Close the window. Am I mad? Why did he go out there? What was that voice? You heard him call her name. It was Kathy. Kathy? Who's she? Kathy is a girl. Who died. I don't believe in ghosts, if that's what you mean. I don't believe in phantoms sobbing in the night. You don't believe. Perhaps if I told you her story, you'd change your mind. About the dead returning. Tell me her story. It all began the time I came to Wuthering Heights as a servant. That was 50 years ago, in 1790. 
The place was different then. A sweet, well-kept estate. Mr. Earnshaw was master. A fine man who dearly loved his two children, Kathy and Hindley. One day, Mr. Earnshaw returned from Liverpool with a fondling boy he has picked up. Dark, savage-looking lad, the most dreadful marks of beatings on his back. Mr. Earnshaw called me in for the moment he arrived. Give him a good scrubbing, Ellen, and put some of Hindley's clothes on him. Oh, yes, sir. Come with me, lad. Don't touch me. Leave me alone. Oh, goodness. Now, son, Ellen won't hurt you. You're safe here. No one will ever beat you again, and you'll always have plenty to eat. Papa's home. Papa's home. Get out of my way. Hello, father. Well, Hindley. Well, Kathy. Papa, who is that boy? Yes, who is he, father? Children, this little guest will pay us a visit for a time, as long as he wants a home here. He's dirty. Look at him. Kathy, don't make me ashamed of you. Hindley, he will sleep in your room. In my room? I won't let him. He's a dirty beggar. That'll do, Hindley. You must learn to share things. Take charge of the lad, Ellen. And what will be his name, Mr. Earnshaw? His name? Why, I think we'll call him Heathcliff. Yes, sir. Come, Heathcliff. That dark, brooding boy brought a subtle change to light at Wuthering Heights. The three children seemed to play together well enough, going scapping up over the moors on their ponies and climbing the crags together. But neither Kathy nor Hibley were open and frank anymore. And one day, those children fought. Your father gave me this pony. It's mine. Give me that pony, do you hear? Or, or I'll tell father how you boasted that you'd turn us out when he died. That's a lie. I never said it. Of course he didn't. He did. He worms his way into everything father does for us. He'll cheat us out of everything. You never had a father, you dirty beggar, and you'll never get mine. Hindley, don't hit him. No, don't. Don't. Heathcliff, look out. He has a stone. Oof. There. Fancy that'll teach you. Hindley, he's, he's bleeding. Serves him right. The filthy scum. Heathcliff, are you hurt? He, he, he hit me with a stone. Please, Heathcliff, don't look like that. Why don't you ever cry when you're hurt, like other people? Why should I cry? I'll pay him back someday. I don't care how long I'll wait, if I only can pay him back. Heathcliff, don't say those things. Come, Heathcliff, now Hindley's gone, we can have a game at the castle again. I don't like playing at the castle. Please? You always smile and laugh when we're there. Come on, Heathcliff, we'll play our game. Don't frown so, Heathcliff. Sit here beside me on the stone and we'll look out over the moors. This is our castle. Castle? <laughs> it's Penstone's Crag and you know it. It's not either. This is your castle and you're a prince in disguise. Tell me about it again. It's all true. Cross my heart. Your father was, was Emperor of China and your mother a Queen of India. You were kidnapped by wicked sailors and brought to England. Don't make fun of me, Kathy. I'm not making fun of you. You're really and truly Prince, and I'm your servant. You're not my servant. You're my Queen, Kathy, and you'll always be my Queen. Nobody else make you his Queen here. Yes, Heathcliff, your Queen. And that's the way they grew up. Wild and free, roaming the moors together. But Hindley grew more and more jealous. Kathy was 18 and Hindley passed 21 when Mr. Earnshaw died. Good man. He never saw the evil of life and had raised Heathcliff like his own son. But on the very day of his funeral... You're not going into that room to look at my father's body. Why? He loved me more than he did you. He's past your wheedling now. 
I'm master of Wuthering Heights. If you want to stay here, we've need for a stable boy. Uh, a stable boy? That or get out. And that's what he became, Heathcliff, who had lived under this roof as one of the family, as a stable boy. Well, give me a hand up to my saddle. Very well. Sir, you lowlife beggar, how many times must I tell you? Sir. Ah, that's better. By the time I come back in the morning, I want these stables scrubbed. Scrubbed, do you understand? If they're not, I'll thrash you till my arms are off. Heathcliff? Heathcliff? Yes, Cathy? Heathcliff, I heard him. How much longer are you going to stand for this? I don't know what you mean. Oh, look at you. Dirty and unkempt and in rags. Why aren't you a man? Why don't you run away? Run away? What, from you? You could come back rich and take me away. Why aren't you a prince like we said long ago? Why can't you rescue me, Heathcliff? Cathy, Cathy, come away with me now. Now? Where? Oh, anywhere. You mean leave as we are? <laughs> Live in haystacks, steal our food? No, Heathcliff, that isn't what I want. Uh, no. <laughs> you just want me to go off, alone. Well, well, it won't do. I've stayed here since your father died. Been beaten and cursed like a dog, abused and driven mad, just because I could be near you. And like a dog, I'll stay to the end. To the end. Yet Heathcliff did run away. The curses and insults were too much, even for his great love. And he disappeared. Cathy found a new world in her first introduction at Linton Manor, with Edgar Linton and his sister Isabella, both Cathy's age. Music and laughter were there, shining eyes and dancing and it was her escape from Wuthering Heights. Edgar Linton fell madly in love with Cathy. They were constantly together. Then one evening Edgar brought Cathy home in his pony cart. As quickly as I could have tried to warn her. My hand down from the cart Miss Cathy. Thank you Edgar. Oh Ellen we had the most marvelous time. Judge Linton had guests from Liverpool. Cathy, come here. Excuse me, Edgar. Certainly. Something wrong, Ellen? Heathcliff's back. Heathcliff? Well, when did he come? Last night. He talks so strange. He... He's here now. Hello, Cathy. Heathcliff, you said you'd stay away until... Why were you gone so long? I didn't expect to find you here. Why were you gone so long? <laughs> because I've met the Lintons. Because I was at the house. Because I learned to dance and had a wonderful, delightful, fascinating time. Are you the stable boy? Would you mind putting my horse up for an hour? Yes, and you might wash your hands and comb your hair, Heathcliff, so I needn't be ashamed of you before a guest. And look after Mr. Linton's horse, please. Let him look after his own horse. Hmm. Pleasant fellow. How can your brother allow such a beast of a stable boy act like this? Beast of a stable boy? Of course. A roadside beggar, giving himself airs of equality. What do you know about Heathcliff? Judging from this performance, all I need to know. He was my friend long before you. That blackguard? Blackguard and all, he belongs under our roof and you'll speak well of him or get out. Kathy, are you out of your senses? Get out, I said, or stop calling those I love names. Those you love? That stable boy? Yes. Kathy, do you realize what you're saying? I'm saying I hate you. I hate the look of that milk-white face. I hate the touch of your soft, foolish hands. Some of that beggar's evil soul has gotten into you, I think. Y yes. Some of that beggar's dirt is on you. 
Yes, yes. Now get out. Get out, get out. Kathy, Kathy, please come back. Kathy? Oh, and then where is he? Where's Heathcliff? Tell me. He's across the moors, towards Penison Craig. Heathcliff. Heathcliff! Heathcliff. Heathcliff, you've forgiven me. Oh, say you've forgiven me. It wasn't your heart that spoke, Kathy. No, my darling, because my heart is yours. Oh, Kathy. The clouds are lowering over Gimmerton Head. Yes. Oh, see how the light is changing? Oh, Kathy. You're such a part of all this. Perhaps we belong to the moors, you and I. Oh, Heathcliff, make the world stop right here. Make everything stop and stand still and never move again. The moors never change. You and I never change. The moors and I will never change. Don't you, Kathy? I can't. No matter what I say or do, this is I. Forever. Oh, Kathy. I will smell the heather, Heathcliff. Fill my arms with heather all I can hold. Kathy, you're... You're not thinking of that other world now. Don't talk, darling, don't talk. All this might disappear. Hurry, please. My hair's not nearly done yet. What's the matter? Supposing you're not ready when young Mr. Linton gets here? Hmm. Any young man who will come snivelling back after the way you treated him. But I sent my apologies to him, didn't I? Of course he'll come. Oh, Kathy, I can't believe this change in you. Just yesterday I seemed you were just a stupid harem scarum child with dirty hands and a willful heart. <laughs> That's my other nature, Ellen. I still have it. It used to fly around wild, but now I can coax it into a cage whenever I want to. Heathcliff, since when are you in the habit of entering my room? I want to talk to you. Get out, Ellen. I will not. I take orders from... Get out! Well... Now that we're so happily alone, may I know to what I owe this great honour? He's coming here again. Who? You know who I mean. That stupid fop, Linton. You're unbearable. Utterly unbearable. Why are you dressed in silk? Because gentlefolk dress for dinner. And why are you trying to win his puling flatteries? I'm not a child anymore. You can't talk to me that way. I'm not talking to a child. I'm talking to Kathy. My Kathy. <laughs> oh, I'm your Kathy. Yes. Am I to take orders from you? The dirty stable boy? Allow you to select what dresses I shall wear and bow humbly to your horrible, wretched tempers? Kathy, where's your heart? You had a chance to be something else. You left me here once. Why didn't you stay away? Let me hear alone. That's right, that's right. The dirty stable boy who can't come near you lest he soil your dress. But who soils your heart? Who turns you into a cheap, vain, ambitious fool? Linton does. You let yourself be loved by him because you want to be a fine lady, because it pleases your stupid, greedy vanity. Stop it! Thief or beggar is all you were born to be. Kneeling beside the road, begging for favours, not earning them, but whimpering for them with dirty hands. I see. All I am to you now is a pair of dirty hands. Well, have them then. Ah! Have them where they belong. How dare you? How dare you? No. It doesn't help to strike you.
Well, Heathcliff, I thank you to stay out of my kitchen. Is... Is Kathy still with him? Yes, she is. What's the matter with you? What are you staring at? I... I want to crawl to her feet, whimper to be forgiven for loving her, for needing her more than my own life, for, for belonging to her more than my own soul. I want to beg for a smile. I don't care if she loves Linton or whom she loves. If only she'd look at me and say my name. Oh, oh Heathcliff, you... Ellen? Ellen? She's coming now. Get out, Heathcliff. I'll wait outside the door. No, you can't. I want to be where I can see her and hear her. Heathcliff! Where are you? Oh, there you are. Yes, Miss Carthy? Has, has Mr. Linton gone? He just left. Oh, Ellen, I have some wonderful news for you. Well, the kitchen's no place for that dress. Come inside. No, no, listen. Edgar has asked me to marry him. What did you say? Well, I'm to give him my answer tomorrow. Kathy, do you love him? Of course. Why? <laughs> now, isn't that a silly question? Because he's handsome and pleasant to be with. Not enough. Well, then, because he'll be rich someday. And I'll be the finest lady in the county. Oh, Ellen, it would be heaven to escape from here. What about Heathcliff? Heathcliff? Ellen, you know he gets worse every day. It would degrade me to marry him. I wish he'd never come back. What was that? I, I think... Oh, nothing. The wind, perhaps. Well, my darling, if Master Edgar and his beautiful home mean heaven to you, you'd better enter the heaven and take your place among the Linton angels. The only thing is, I wonder if I belong in heaven. I dreamt once. I was there and it broke my heart with weeping to come back to earth to the bleak moors. And I woke, sobbing with joy, on top of Wuthering Heights. And you see, Ellen, I... I suppose I've really no more business marrying Edgar Linton than I'd have in heaven. Oh, Ellen, what can I do? You're thinking of Heathcliff. But who else? He's sunk so low, yet he seems to take pleasure in being mean and brutal, and yet yet he's, he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Everything he's suffered, I've suffered too. The little happiness he's known, I've, I've known. If everything else in the world died and only Heathcliff remains, life would still be full for me. Who was that? Ellen, I, I heard... Miss Cathy! Miss Cathy! Yes, Joseph? Heathcliff's taken Master Hindley's best horse and he's gone. Gone? Ellen, did he hear what I said? Yes, Miss Cathy. How much did he hear? Oh, I'm not sure. But I think to where you said it would degrade you to marry him. No, no, Heathcliff! Heathcliff, come back! Come back, Heathcliff! That night, Heathcliff went away. Kathy ran far across the moors after him in the bitter cold, calling his name into the wind. Hours later, in the morning, Edgar Linton found her, half frozen in her silky party dress, unconscious on the crag the children used to call the castle. For weeks after she was ill, the Lintons took her to the manor house, and I was glad for day by day the strange influence that Heathcliff had upon Cathy wore off, and she was happy with Edgar. Why can't you remain here forever, Kathy? Oh, Edgar, you and your sister, you've been too kind to me already. If I can make you happy by just being kind, that should be enough for me. After all, what else can I give you? What else? You've given me a great deal else, Edgar. 
You've given me your old self, your strength. My, my strength? You'd understand if you really knew what my life was like before. It was like the moors, endless and desolate. And I was lost in them, calling for someone in the darkness to save me, and nobody, nobody answered. I couldn't even see the trace of a path. I was so frightened, so terribly alone, and suddenly you were there, Edgar. You held out your hand and led me back to a way of living I thought I'd lost forever. What you said long ago is true. There was a curse on me. It kept me from being myself, or, or at least what I wanted to be. And that kept me from living in heaven. There. Do you understand now? Kathy, my darling, let me take care of you forever. Let me guard you and love you always. Would you? Would you love me? Always? Always, Kathy. Then let's be married, Edgar. Quickly. Quickly. If the Linton home had seen heaven to me before, I don't know what to call it after she became his mistress. The only one who did not seem completely happy was Edgar's sister, Isabella. A year or two after the marriage, the three of them sat in the drawing room. Edgar, reading, Isabella playing with the spinet, Kathy quietly doing her petit point. When the door knocker sounded, when I saw who it was, I went back to the drawing room. Yes, Ellen? Why, what's the matter? It's just Kathy. Heathcliff has come back. Heathcliff? Tell him I'm not at home, Ellen. Not at home, darling? To whom? It's Heathcliff. Heathcliff? Well, does he seem the same, Ellen? No, sir. I hardly recognize him. Fine clothes? He seems quite the gentleman. Don't prattle, Ellen. I said I didn't wish to see him. Oh, nonsense, Kathy. It's been a long time. Bygones must be bygones. Oh, yes. Let us see some kind of caller. Show him in, Ellen. Yes, sir. Edgar, this is a mistake. Why, Kathy? Your hands are trembling. Are they? The past is dead, dear. Don't hesitate to smile and be nice to him. Because I'll understand it's my wife who loves me, who smiles. Thank you, Edgar. You always understand. Mr. Heathcliff! Come in! Hello, Kathy. How are you, Heathcliff? Uh, have you met my sister, Isabella? Uh, no, I'm sorry. How did you do, Miss Linton? We are glad to see a guest, sir. Ah, thank you. Well, Heathcliff, I must say, I have never seen such a complete change in a man. You seem to have prospered. You must have gone to America. Uh, I did. Well, we wondered where you went. You must have found at least a gold mine. Uh, no, I merely remembered my father was an emperor of China and my mother a queen of India. I beg your pardon? Uh, so I claimed my inheritance. Uh, uh, Kathy will understand. It's an old joke between us. I see. Are you staying long in the neighborhood? Yeah, I'm staying the rest of my life. Really? I've just bought the horses, the cattle, and the moors uh, belonging to the estate known as Withering Heights. No! You mean, Kathy's brother Henry sold out? Um, <laughs> but he doesn't know it, yet. I imagine it'll be a shock when Hindley discovers that his gambling and drinking debts were paid up for him by his former stable boy. Heathcliff, you can't have done that! That's as underhanded a piece of work as I've ever heard of. If I had known that his holdings were being stolen by a stranger... May I remind you, uh, Mr. Edgar Linton, that I am not a stranger. I'm merely a neighbor. Uh, for now, I'll say good night. Wait, Heathcliff. Well? I, I want you to know that we sometimes have friends who come here as guests, Edgar and I. You're welcome to come too. Not with the old scowl on your face or the old bitterness in your heart. Thank you, my old friend Kathy, uh, for the warning. Oh, I just remembered I forgot to congratulate you on your uh, marriage. 
I've often thought about it, I can assure you. May I now express my delight? Good night. Edgar, I think you behaved abominably. What? And you too, Kathy. What in thunder do you mean? You could have at least been civil. You dismissed him as if he'd been a servant. Well, do you consider him anything else? Yes, I find he's grown fascinating and distinguished. Really, Isabella? I hope I misunderstand. Well, you don't. We see all too few people, and I, for one, shan't be rude if he ever calls again. Edgar, I, I greatly dread what the future will bring. Oh, nonsense, darling. I tell you, the past is dead. That's all, Joseph. You'll stay on, of course. Oh, thank you, sir. Shall I pack Master Hindley's things? Oh, uh, just move them out of the master's bedroom. He'll remain under this roof. Master Hindley, sir? Oh, yes. He gave me a roof once when I needed it. I, um, I take it he's drinking a great deal? Uh, yes, sir. Though Dr. Kenneth has ordered him not to. Well... We'll give him all the drink he wants. Yes, sir. Uh, a lady is waiting to see you, sir. A lady? From Linton Manor, sir. But why didn't you tell me? In the future, announce visitors at once. Uh, oh. Miss Linton. Are you disappointed, sir? Uh, no, uh, not at all. Well, I I was passing by, and uh, my horse went lame. I see. Mr. Heathcliff, I want to tell you, I'm furious with my brother and with Cathy. They received you most shamefully last night. Your brother didn't send you with this apology, did he? Oh, no. No, in fact, he's forbidden me to... To speak to me, hmm? Well, yes... And... and Cathy also forbade you? Yes. Hmm. Then in all the moorland you are my only friend, hmm? Well, uh, I would like to be. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Miss Linton, I enjoy frankness. You didn't come here to apologize, and your horse didn't go lame. Why, I... Uh... You came because you're lonely. And because the house you live in is too happily wedded for an outsider. And because it's no joy to ride the moors alone. Is that right? Yes. Then you needn't be lonely anymore, my dear. Uh, oh, uh... What? Do you think it's strange that I should kiss you? Well, I, I don't know. You hated it? Oh, no. Well... <laughs> I see you like frankness, too. Oh, come in, Kathy. Wasn't it a lovely dance tonight? Though I think you could have been more gracious to my guest. Isabella. May I speak to you for a moment? Well? You behaved disgracefully. How, may I ask? It was bad enough asking Heathcliff here without consulting us or preparing us. You'd have forbidden me. To make a spectacle of yourself, to throw yourself at him the way you did. Well, nobody else would pay attention to him. You refused to dance with him. I had to dance every dance as a result. Oh, you fool, you vain little fool. Really, Carthy? I'm going to open your eyes, Isabella. He's using you. Using you to be near me, to smile at me behind your back, to stare at me until our guests fear his murderous look, to try to rouse something in my heart that's dead. 
and I'll not let you help him any longer. So that's what you mean. It's you who are vain and foolish, Cathy. Heathcliff's in love with me. It's a lie. It's not a lie. He told me so. He's kissed me. He's... Yes, kissed me. Held me in his arms. Told me he loves me. Oh. I'm going to your brother. Yes, go to Edgar. Tell him Heathcliff asked me to marry him. And that I've said yes. You hear? Yes. You can't. He's not a man. He's something horrible and dark to live with. I know why you say these things. Because you love him. How dare you say that? Yes, you do love him. You're mad with pain and jealousy at the thought of my marrying him. Because you want him to pine for you, dream of you, die for you, while you're safe as the lovely Mrs. Edgar Linton. You won't have him happy. You want to hurt and destroy him. But I want to make him happy. And I will. Do you hear? I will. Sit down, Cathy. I won't say I'm not surprised to see you. Heathcliff, is it true? Is what true? Did you ask Isabella to marry you? <laughs> Heathcliff, you mustn't do this villainous thing. She's never harmed you. No. No, but you've harmed me. Then punish me. And that's what I intend to do. I don't understand. Every moment I hold her in my arms, when I kiss her, when I promise her life and happiness, you'll be punished. You'd marry her to do that? Yes, to teach you the ways of pain and the hell that I'm in. Oh, Heath, if you can't, if there's anything human left in you, don't make me a partner to this crime. It's, it's bad, it's stupid. If your heart were only stronger than your dull care for the world and its conventions, I'd live silent and content in your shadow, begging for an occasional word or thought as I used to do. But now, you had to destroy me with that weakness you call virtue. You had to keep me tormented with that cruelty you think is so pious. How have I been cruel? You wish to be known as the finest lady in the county. You wanted your luxury and your light. And at the same time, you wanted to keep me your despairing lover. Well, now that I am returned, had you given me the smile of love, I might have been content. But you needn't think of me now as your despairing and foolish lover. You can think of me as Isabella's husband and be glad for my happiness, as I am for yours. It was then that Isabella Linton came into this house and bride. Yes, Heathcliff did marry her out of revenge. The same revenge that made him keep Hindley here. A staggering broken fool, slowly drinking his way into the grave. Isabella learned the reason for her marriage to Heathcliff, but she was powerless to do anything. Then, one day, Dr. Kenneth an old friend came to see her. He had come that morning from the Linton Manor. Isabella, go back where you belong, to Edgar's house. Edgar disowned me, Dr. Kenneth. I know, but he needs you now. Kathy's gravely ill. Really? Did it you know? It's a matter of days now, perhaps hours. But she, she can't be dying. Beaver. Inflammation of the lungs, this intense cold, something else. Something else? I'd call it the will to die. If Kathy dies, I might begin to live. Isabella! Begin to live? Ah, in this house with Heathcliff, nothing can live. No, Henley, nothing but hate. Goodbye. So you think you'll begin to live when Kathy dies? You won't. Oh, Hilly, what is it? This house, I can feel the hate within it. It's like a crushing weight. Of course you can. And you. He hates you even more than he does me. Stop it. He loathes you. 
<laughs> Every time you kiss him, his heart breaks with rage that it's not Kathy. Isabella, why don't you do what I've been too weak to do? Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Don't talk to me. Get away. While there's still time to save your immortal soul. <laughs> well, Hindley, remarkable. Heathcliff. Really, Hindley, the first coherent speech I've heard from you in weeks. Heathcliff, please don't. I tried to stop him. Thank you, my dear wife. Your loyalty is touching. Your curses will come home to feed on your own heart. Every agony you've given will return. <laughs> Laugh now, Heathcliff. There's no laughter in hell. Heathcliff, why do you have him here? I can't breathe with him in this house. Oh, existence would be so much less without my boyhood friend under my roof. Oh, Heathcliff, you poison yourself with paying him back what he gave you. Send him away and love will come to this house. Kiss me, Heathcliff. Tell me you love me. Tell me, darling. Oh, why isn't there a smell of heather in your hair? Heathcliff, let me come near you. Please. You're not as black and horrible as they say. It, it's just you're full of pain, all twisted inside. I can make you happy, my darling. Let me, please. You'll never regret letting me try. Uh, I'll be your servant. I'll, I'll bring life to you. Life and sunshine and freshness. Put your arms around me. Look into my eyes. Your eyes are empty. Like Linton's. They aren't empty. If you'll only look deeper, Heathcliff. Look at me. I'm pretty. I'm a woman. Let your heart see me just once. It's no use. Why did God give me life? What is it but hunger and pain? A naked runner and a storm of spears. Mistress Isabella. Ellen? What do you want here, Ellen? I've come from Linton Manor to speak to Mr. Shizabella. Then you'll do so in front of me. Her brother's asking that she'll come home for a visit. Ah, uh, so he's lost some of his pride, has he? Well, there's none gone in this house. Oh, please, Mr. Shizabella. He needs you. Needs her? Now what is this, Ellen? Why does he need her? Let go of me. Kathy's ill. Yes. She's dying? Tell me the truth. Yes. She's dying. Die. Joseph! You're not going, Heathcliff. Yes, Master Heathcliff. Saddle my horse at once. No! She belongs to Edgar. She belongs to me. If she's dying, let her die in his arms where she belongs. Let her die. Let her die! Now who speaks of hate? Get out of my way. Heathcliff, no! No, no! And there was a murmur from the height, a far away and wild, heartbroken moan. The wings of Lucifer beat on the night. The soul of Lucifer wept all alone. Shall I read some more, darling? No, Edgar. Will you open the window? Won't it be too cold? Please. Of course, darling. Uh, now I can smell the heather. And Edgar, isn't there south wind? And isn't the smell almost gone? Yes, quite gone. Edgar... Will you get me something? Anything you wish, my darling. Some heather. There's a beautiful patch near the castle. Will you get it from there? What castle, Kathy? The castle on the moors, of course. Bring me some from there. You're in a fever, dear. There's no castle on the moors. There is, there is. On the little hill beyond Wuthering Heights. You mean Penstone Crag? Yes, yes. Please go. Why do you call it the castle? Because I was a queen there once. We 
Will you bring me the heather, darling? You'll feel rest while I'm gone and sleep. You're so kind, You're so good. My darling. You made me the finest lady in the county. <laughs> Go now, please. Get me the heather so I can have it on my pillow. Sleep, my dear Kathy. I'll be back with the flower you want. Where is she? Where's Kathy? She's not to be disturbed, sir. Master Linton has gone for the doctor. Get out of my way. Kathy? Oh, oh, Kathy. Heathcliff, come here. Kathy, my life, I, how can I bear this? I dreamed you'd come before I died. And when you came in my dream, you scowled at me once more. Kathy, Kathy. Uh, does it hurt so much to see me dying? Please, Kathy, don't hurt me. Oh, how strong you look, Heathcliff. How many years do you think you'll live on after me? Kathy, oh, my life, my soul. Oh, my darling, don't let me go. If only I could hold you till we were both dead. Please, please don't speak of death. Will you forget me and be happy when I'm in the earth? Never. Never. Will you say of me, this is the grave of Catherine Earnshaw. I loved her long ago and wept to lose her, but all has passed. I could as soon forget you as my own life. If you die, Kathy, I if you die, there'll be no peace for me. Ever. Oh, Heathcliff, I want to die. To escape. Why did you betray your heart? Kathy, you killed yourself. Shh, my darling. Hold me. Just hold me. No, no, I, I'll not comfort you. You deserve this. Heathcliff, don't break my heart. I never broke your heart, Kathy. You broke it. My tears don't love you, Kathy. They blight and damn you. You loved me. What right had you to throw my love away for the poor fancied thing you felt for him? I found out, Heathcliff. Misery and death and all evil could never have parted us. You. You did that alone. You wandered off, like a greedy child, to break your own heart. And mine. I know, Heathcliff. Oh, forgive me. Oh, Kathy, your, your poor wasted hands. Oh, why didn't someone tell me? I forgive you. I, I forgive you for what you've done. I love you. I, I love my murderer. Carry me to the window. Let me look at the moors with you once more. Oh, my darling, once more. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How lovely the sky looks. And over there is that castle. Remember? I'll never forget. The castle, Heathcliff. I'll be waiting there until you come. I'll be waiting there. <laughs> Goodbye. Kathy? Kathy? No! Heathcliff, they're coming. Master Edgar, oh, for heaven's sake, go away and... Kathy. You're dead, Kathy. May your soul hear this before I go. May you not rest so long as I live on. I killed you. Then haunt me. Be with me always. Take any form you wish, only, only don't leave me where I can't find you. I can't live without my life. 
I can't live without my soul. And though that was 20 years ago, I can still hear and see the wild hour with poor Heathcliff holding the dead body of his beloved, crying out to Kathy's soul to haunt and torment him till the day he died. And that strange hand that gripped me wrist last night, the strange voice that called to me was Kathy, and Heathcliff went to follow her into the storm. It wasn't Kathy herself, but her love. Kathy's love, stronger than time, sobbing for its unlived days. Who's there? Dr. Kenneth, open the door. Dr. Kenneth, what's the matter? I... I was just crossing the moor on my way home. Did you see Heathcliff? Yes, I saw him from my carriage. He was wandering through the snow with a woman. A woman, you say? A young woman. She seemed, and as mad as himself, they were walking through the storm with their arms about each other. I shouted at them, but they didn't hear. I was nearly up to them when, of a sudden, my horse reared and plunged. And then, then I found him, alone, lying in the snow. Heathcliff was dead. Dead? Was it by the castle? By the Penistone Crag? Yes. However did you know? Look down, my Heathcliff. This is our castle really now. All the wild beauty of it. For your father was an emperor of China, your mother the queen of India, and this is our land forever and our love. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Bergen Stage's Radio Theater's performance of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, featuring Legionitis as Kathy, Matthew Rella as Heathcliff, Stella Villarini as Isabella, Katie Prieg as Ellen, Ray Parente as young Hindley, Anya Campbell as young Kathy, and Rob Kirstner as young Heathcliff. Nicholas Cirillo played Edgar, Alexander Preziosi as Hindley, Peter Helf as Mr. Earnshaw, David Legrand as Dr. Kenneth, Kevin Bergen as Lockwood, Jim Baumgartner as Joseph, and Dean Matson as the servant. Dean Matson is also our recording engineer and special effects creator. Marianne Co. Rivera is our video engineer, and I am Jim Baumgartner, your host. Thank you to Bergen Community College, the BCC Office of Student Life, and the BCC Media Technologies Department. Tune in to another episode of Bergen Stages Radio Theater soon, and be sure to catch all of our other earlier episodes available online. Until next time, don't touch that dial, and if you do, remember to disinfect it first. <laughs>